you who are regular viewers of my channel will know that a while ago I did a review of a cheap Chinese VR headset, the Ritec 2. Well, for those who live in the UK, you may be aware of, nah, I correct that, you will be aware of the makeup catalogue people, Avon, for whom you can order makeup products either from an Avon representative who will deliver your products to your door along with the next month catalogue, or in recent years, order from their website. Well, obviously, being an ugly bugger, I have absolutely no need of their services, but my wife does, and while pursuing the catalogue last month, she came across a virtual headset that Avon are selling for 18 English pounds at the time of this review. So, bugger it, I thought I'd pick one up and test it for you, see if it's worth you spending your hard earned money on. Here in the advert, we can see a lady who is obviously immersing herself into the world of VR for the first time, as she is really excited about her purple universe, which boasts it will transform any smartphone into an unimaginable world of games and films, all from the comfort of your home. And from my past experience with VR, yes, that's not far off the truth. With 360 degree videos available from YouTube, games and apps from the Google Cardboard, and the ability to watch movies in your own virtual cinema with apps such as Seymour Cinema. Just remember, as it iterates here, you're not going to get an actual phone with this product. This actually holds your existing mobile phone. Okay, on with the unboxing. Well, the headset comes in this rather strange box. Having some sort of racing design on makes you initially think that maybe they've delivered the wrong product. I believe it's likely more the case of them using a generic box design they already produce. Can't prove that though, let me know if you do. Inside, found within the costing confines of this bubble wrap bag, yes, bubble wrap, we find the headset itself and some instructions. Initially, you feel the thickness of the instructions and think this is going to be complex, but it turns out that only the front page is in English, so it's actually a different page for each language. That's a lot of languages. Anyhow, the instructions are clear and well written. We won't pay too much attention to them as I'm going to be demonstrating the product here. Ok, onto the product itself and you will immediately see that there are two sections to it. The headset itself and the head strap. And to adjust the headset, it's likely best if you put your phone in the front before adjusting the headset for the size of your noggin, due to the extra weight that will be in the front. Now let's see how we do that. To put your phone into the headset, first of all, you need to open this front flap, which is done simply by depressing this catch. You're one ugly catch. I hate you. Oh, not like that. Like this. This front flap then drops down and you'll see this holder for your phone. This headset will hold any phone up to 7.5cm by 14.5cm or 3 inches by 5.7 inches. So it just takes my Galaxy Note 7 Edge. Phew. Anyhow, one thing I really like about this design compared to others I've seen is this clamp into which you put your phone. It holds it really securely. That's not going anywhere. On placing your phone in here, make sure that the centre of the screen lines up with the divider between the two eyepieces, or you're going to get a very strange effect when you try to use it. Next, place it on your head, and you can use the straps here to adjust. My problem is that I have a big noggin, so I found I did not need to adjust it out of the box. Bargain. The designers of this headset have included these very handy removable flaps at the front to allow you to access things such as volume controls and headphone jack of your phone. Although with a phone the size of mine, these prove to be of no particular use. On the sides of the headset are slots to also allow you to access your phone's speaker, headphone port, etc. But the foam lining of them means you do not get light leak through them. The next thing to do is to set these up to your eyesight. To assist this there are two different functions. These levers move the lenses in and out to position depending on the width between your eyes, and the lenses themselves can be turned to focus, a feature that was missing in the Ritec 2 headset, meaning that for some people it never seemed to be quite in focus. If you're not a glasses wearer, these ones are likely to be a big factor, but this mask is on the smaller side so it does not give any room for glasses, meaning that as I have quite a strong prescription, it meant quite a bit of adjustment before I could see a clear picture. A warning here, if you turn these counterclockwise too much, there are no stops and they will just fall out and can be fiddly to get back in, so try and avoid this. 
The best way to work out the focus I found is to have a static VR image on the screen. So try downloading a program such as Galaxy VR, which to use, you need to pair a Bluetooth controller to your phone, but it does have a nice static menu you can use to set up your headset. For sound, there are three options available to you. You can either use the speakers on your phone, have a wire connection, or a Bluetooth connection if your headphones support that. The faceplate itself was well padded, but I found the mask to be slightly smaller than the Ritec. Where it does have the other beat is that once you have this on, it's very dark in there. There is very little light leak. This lack of light leak is due to a weakness in its design. Other headsets often have air vents to let the warm air out. This does not. This is not a big issue day to day, but if it's a hot summer's day and you're sweating, the surfaces inside are quickly going to mist up, so it's best to sit down and cool down a while before using this headset. Once you're up and ready to go, you can facilitate things like 360 degree videos on YouTube. Just don't forget to press the cardboard button to get the two viewpoints required for the headset to work. You can download VR games either from the Play Store, or if you install the Google Cardboard application, you can look in there for the many programs on offer. Despite the weaknesses of the vents, I like this headset. It has the focusing system that many headsets around this price range do not offer. So as a wear of glasses, this is important. You're not going to get the widescreen views using this headset or any other phone based headset, but you're not in the same league in the aspect of cost. And if you want to dip your toe into the world of VR to see if you like it, this is an ideal headset. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, then please like it. If you enjoy this sort of content, then please subscribe. You can join like-minded people in our Facebook group or Twitter feed. And if you wish to support the channel, we also have a Patreon page. Just remains to say, hope you've enjoyed, hope it's been of use to you, and thanks very much for watching. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>